what a privilege to be here virtually, vicariously, to share with you a celebration of the blue part of the planet, Ocean Day. This is a chance, as never before in history, to see the world, to see the ocean with new eyes. When I began exploring the ocean back in the 1950s, there's so much that not only I did not know, but that no one knew. Now, armed with knowledge, we have seen changes. Some of the changes have been extraordinarily positive. We know more about the nature of this blue planet, about the ocean, from the surface to the greatest depths than ever before in history. We've probably learned more during my lifetime, you know, decades, recent decades anyway, than during all preceding human history. Now we know what we could not know during any time in the past, and that the smartest animals who share the planet with us, elephants are really smart, dolphins, whales, birds, intelligence, but they cannot see what we see or know what we know. What we also know is in recent times, recent decades, we've seen changes of a negative sort. Not until the 1980s did we begin to really track climate, the, the melting of ice in polar regions, watching over time now the decline in the Arctic of that, that important part of Earth's temperature regulating system, connected, of course, to the most important part of the temperature regulating system of the planet, the ocean. What we've also seen is a decline in the diversity of life on the land and certainly in the ocean. We've seen a time when the populations of ocean wildlife, the tunas, the swordfish, and many other creatures have taken a dive. Only maybe 10% of the sharks remain from when I began exploring the ocean in the 1950s. We now understand our power to destroy so much of that which keeps us alive. We also have understand as never before the power that we have to heal. 2020 was, was really, and many of us were anticipating this as a big year for the ocean when through the United Nations, we would begin to really look at the high seas, half the world with, with the understanding that it's not just there, not only as the common heritage of humankind, the global commons, but it, is a global responsibility that we have a chance to embrace this area that delivers much of the oxygen to the atmosphere, captures much of the carbon. It's home for literally most of life, life on Earth because it's not just the surface, nearly half the surface of the world. It's also the great depths down to 11 kilometers, plus or minus a bit. And, and that this is the biggest ecosystem on Earth. It's the least explored place on Earth. But we have a shared responsibility to embrace it with care, knowing that it's the heart of the planet, the heart of the ocean that keeps not just the ocean alive, keeps us alive. We are sea creatures every bit as much as the whales, the, the fish, coral reefs, and kelp forests. We need the ocean now. The ocean needs us. We have the power of taking action on our watch. This decade, the decade of ocean exploration, the decade of ocean care, 2020 can still be that turning point. It has to be. When else are we going to take action, take what we now know, and put it to work to reverse the decline of ocean wildlife? to embrace the ocean, not just the high seas, but do as some nations have already stepped up and taken action to do, to embrace their exclusive economic zones with an enhanced care. Chile has done it. The Seychelles have done it. 
the little island nation of Palau, 80% of the exclusive economic zone embraced with enhanced care for the creatures who live there and on whom we are dependent. And I have not thinking about the usual things that, oh, we need to take more from the ocean. We need to take the fish, take the shrimp, take this krill, take whatever. No, it's a time to say, we have to give back. We're right on the point of either continuing this extractive attitude, taking, taking, taking from nature, when the most important thing we take from nature is our existence. This is also the year when mining, deep sea mining is a headline. Either we will choose a time to take action and think about what we actually need and to think about the choice that we have to perhaps give the ocean a much needed break to re recover from not just decades or centuries, but through a history of our, of our kind, of our species, of extracting from the ocean at a level that now we know we can see because we are aiming for sustainable use of the ocean, not continued extraction to the point where we can see that we're causing damage, not just to the ocean, not just to wildlife in the ocean, but to ourselves. This is a year, 2020, when we need to come to grips with a realization that we truly are all connected, that the whole natural world is a global commons filled with hope, filled with despair, filled with choice. Elephants don't have the choice. Tuna don't have the choice. The viruses that sweep the world, mostly working in our favor, a few, one in particular, certainly not working in our favor right now, except to really cause us to see as maybe we haven't seen before how we are united. Viruses don't care who we are, or where we live, what our political leanings might be. We're just all hosts for those creatures that have a taste for us. We have to use this moment in time armed with that knowledge of our vulnerability, armed with the knowledge that we're all vulnerable to climate. We can't build fences or walls high enough to keep out viruses that might harm us. We aren't able to build walls or borders or barriers that can keep out climate change. We're all in this together. And we all have to work together to find the common ground, protect our common heritage, to give back to nature, to protect the systems that, that make our economy, our health, our security, our existence possible. We have the power as never before of knowing that is a superpower. Children of today, 10 year olds know what I could not know and no one could know in times past about who we are in the greater scheme of not just life on earth, but our existence in the universe. That other, if we don't take care of this part of the universe, what else do we have? This is our home and it's mostly blue. So as we celebrate 2020, this year of the ocean, Make it a commitment on the part of whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever age you are. It doesn't matter what part of the planet you come from. We're all on this same planet together with a shared responsibility, the shared hope that we can use this moment in time this enhanced time of awareness of how we're all in this together, to move from where we are to a better place, to embrace the ocean. Yes, think about the blue economy 
like a green economy. Let's find that place where we can work with nature to exploit our minds and to care for nature as never before, as never again, we have a chance to get it right.